Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Popeye, them finos say you're firm on street. And the news where you carry are no counterfeit. So tell all who are fighter you, them can't defeat. And I got give your strength so your heart no weak. Mm-hmm. So I say God and greatness. Like, subscribe, and share to Popeye News Links if it's the truth you want to hear. So yeah. Greetings, greetings, viewers and subscribers. Now, I want you to listen to this question and the answer that the Commissioner of Police, Dr. Kevin Blake, gave at a press conference yesterday. Listen to this. Rumors have circulated on social media alleging that Leoda Bradshaw was impregnated by a, a policeman at the St. Catherine lockup she is being held at. Is there any truth to these rumors? Um, and so we heard the allegation and immediately commissioned an investigation around it. We also removed the officer who was so um, accused um, from the station, but our investigation to this point has not um, sh shown that there is any truth to the allegation. And so, so far, um, the allegation seems to be false. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the journalists on the platform? So, you heard that? The specific question that was asked was whether or not Leo da Bradshaw was impregnated by Squaddy. That is what the Commissioner of Police responded to. The question was not whether or not Squaddy took Leo da Bradshaw out of the cell and them go do it. So that question is yet to be asked and answered. Are you following me? <laughs> no, I want you to consider this. I want you to consider this. Listen to me carefully. In early last month, the DPP, she served documents on the trigger man, the hoodlum who put the bullets into both Toshina and Saraya. That document was because she is seeking the death penalty for him. The DPP, she has not indicated whether or not she is seeking the death penalty for Leoda Bradshaw, but it is possible that the DPP might do so because Leoda Bradshaw, she is charged as being the alleged mastermind. Did you know that if a female is pregnant, the death penalty cannot be sought for her? <laughs> check it out. It's, it's not a laughing matter, you know, but check it out. In this next story, in yesterday's video, I told you about the home of a teacher being broken into in the Cooper Avenue area of New Arbor Village in Old Arbor in the parish of St. Catherine. A 32-year-old teacher, she went to bed Sunday night, April 7, and while she was asleep, hoodlums broke off the lock of the back door and entered her house searched her handbag which was on a table and stole from it her bank cards and the car keys for her honda fit motor car that was parked in her yard the hoodlums they then stole her 2015 silver honda fit motor car so we are told that monday morning april 8 about 10 o'clock a team of police officers they were conducting a spot check operation in the white mall area of central village when they signaled a silver 2015 honda fit motor car to stop the driver he complied two young hoodlums were in the car when the police dug deep they realized that it was the said honda fit motor car that was stolen from the teacher further investigations revealed that it was the same Two young hoodlums who had broken into her house and stole her car. We are told that the two young hoodlums, they gave the police statements confessing to the crime. We are also told that the police took one of them to his house and a search was carried out. 
Several items suspected to be stolen were found at that house. The two young hoodlums are 1. Dante Morris. He is 17 years old and he is living at Bodo in the Old Ababie area of St. Catherine. The other guy, his name is Kimani Winter. He also go by the names Akan White or Dangles. Dangles is only 15 years old. But we are told that Dangles, he has no fixed address and he's a very dangerous guy. We are told that it's a good thing. The teacher did not wake up and see them in her house. Otherwise, it is likely that she would have been killed. So, the two young hoodlums, they have been charged for burglary and larceny of a motor vehicle. They'll be going to the courts shortly. Officers, job well done. In this next story, the police, they released that photo on your screen earlier today. That female, her name is Christilda Lewis, but she's popularly known as Tanya. Tanya, she was born on June 17, 1994, almost 30 years old. Tanya, she's from Nain in the parish of St. Elizabeth, but her last known address was Black River, also in the parish of St. Elizabeth. We are told that Tanya, she used to be employed at a Supreme Ventures outlet at Red Ground in the parish of St. Elizabeth, and hundreds of thousands of dollars went unaccounted for. That is why Tanya is wanted by the police because it is alleged that tanya is the culprit so tanya you are wanted go give up yourself to the police in this next incident i had said lagood in yesterday's video but it actually took place at a place named bakadia in the green island police area in the parish of hanover it took place monday night april 8 about 11 30. So, we are learning that a man, he is living at Rosites in Montego Bay. He was in the Bacadia area visiting a friend. He was walking along the roadway when he was pounced on by two hoodlums who opened gunfire at him, hitting him to the left side of his back and the right side of his head. The man, he fell to the ground and the hoodlums, thinking they had completed their murderous mission they made good their escape on foot in the area but the man he didn't die he managed to alert someone who called the police when the police arrived on the scene the man he was found at the back of a premises in a pool of blood the police they rushed with him to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted in a serious condition we are told that when the police processed this crime scene, a number of 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. In this next incident, I carried a story last week, Monday, April 1. It was about an incident that took place the previous morning, Easter Sunday, March 31, about minutes after 11 o'clock. It took place at Fern Gully in the parish of St. Anne. I told you that a black Nissan caravan being driven by Trevon Reed of a Waterford address. It had left the corporate area early that same morning with 23 passengers aboard, 16 children and 7 adults. They were heading to a location in Ocherias on an excursion. On reaching the Fern Gully, the driver who, we are told, did a burn up road. He lost control of the bus which crashed into an embankment. As a result of that crash, 49-year-old housekeeper Susie Thomas of a Wildman Street address in Kingston, she died on the spot. At the end of that report, I told you that other persons including children were seriously injured and i was hoping that they pulled through well it is sad to say that two other persons they died as a result of that accident 
One is Noreen Allen. She was 58 years old. And the other one is Kayla Brown. She was 8 years old. Both of them, like Suzette, they were living at Wildman Street in Kingston. Kayla, she was a student at the Alpha Primary School. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place yesterday afternoon. Tuesday, April 9, about 2.30. It took place at East Avenue in the compound area of Central Village in the parish of St. Catherine. We are told that a guy, his name is Timoy Ratigan. He was 35 years old and he was living in the same compound area of Central Village. We are told that Timoy's girlfriend, she sell in a shop in the area. Yesterday afternoon, Timoy, he went to the shop to buy something. While he was at the shop, he was approached by a group of hoodlums who were armed with handguns and rifles. The hoodlums, they opened gunfire at Timoy, hitting him all over his body. Timoy, he fell to the ground and the hoodlums, they made good their escape on foot in the area. The police, they were called and from all indication, Timoy, he died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, a total of 15 spent shells to include AK-47 and 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, there is a new hotel being constructed in the Green Island area of Hanover and the truth is ever since construction started on that hotel several persons working there has been either shot and killed or shot and injured it is well known that extortion and other activities is the order of the day at that construction site that's the reality we face Persons from all over Jamaica are employed on the hotel's construction site. The latest incident involving workers at that hotel construction site took place last night. Tuesday, April 9, about 8 o'clock. It took place at Newtown in the Cousins Cove area of Hanover. We are told that three steel workers who were employed to the site, they were living at a house at Newtown in Cousins Cove. They are all the way from Landui District in the parish of St. Thomas. One of them, his name is Kevin Williams. He was 28 years old. We are told that last night, all three were at home. Kevin, he was in his bed on his phone. One of his co-workers was in the kitchen cooking and the other one, he was in the yard on his phone also. We are told that a white Toyota Axio motor car drove up in the yard and stopped. A hoodlum who was dressed in a sight vest and a helmet. He jumped out of the Axio with a gun in his hand and he opened gunfire at the man who was in the yard. That man, he managed to run off and escaped in bushes. Luckily, he was not hurt. The hoodlum, he then went into the house and opened gunfire at the man who was cooking and Kevin, hitting them in their upper body. The hoodlum, he then jumped back into the axio making good his escape. Kevin Williams, who had wrapped himself in a sheet and tried to hide from the hoodlum under his bed bottom, he died on the spot. The man who was cooking, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted in a serious condition. When the police processed this crime scene, 
a total of 10 9 mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So, that hoodlum's aim was to kill all three men last night. Boy, may I tell you, the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Tell them.